Hello everyone, welcome to Yoga Upload. I'm Maris Aylward. In today's video, we'll talk about the different styles of yoga. There are so many different kinds of classes out there and sometimes it can be difficult to know which practice is suitable for you and your needs. So today we'll talk about the different benefits of the styles and how do you know which is right for you? That's all coming up next. Right now in the modern world, there are so many different kinds, even brands of yoga. And today we'll talk about just four of the common styles you'll see in yoga studios or gyms or even online. And the first one we'll talk about is Hatha Yoga. Hatha is a general term used to describe the physical practice of yoga. So it's different from, let's say, meditation and yoga philosophy. It deals with the physical discipline, the practice of asanas or yoga postures. So you can say that what we do here on Yoga Upload falls under the umbrella of Hatha Yoga because we do the physical practice of yoga. Now, sometimes in yoga studios or gyms or online classes, you'll also see hatha as one of the styles. The word can also be used to describe a more gentle form of yoga or a static form of yoga, meaning in the class there is no flow. You don't move with the breath like in vinyasa class. In hatha, you hold the poses longer. Now, who is it for? Hatha yoga can be really good for someone who's just starting out with their yoga practice because you hold the poses long enough to learn proper alignment, you're able to really feel the sensations and subtle energies in the body. Now, not all hatha yoga is gentle. It can be a stronger form of practice, so even intermediate students can benefit from it. Next is your vinyasa yoga or vinyasa flow yoga. Vinyasa is a Sanskrit term that has several meanings. The word vinyasa is loosely translated as to place in a special way. Now, in the context of the modern yoga world and yoga classes and yoga studios, vinyasa refers to the flowing style of practice where you connect your breath, and your movement. We link the poses together to create a flowing sequence, almost like a dance. Now this is the style that I teach the most and a lot of the classes here on Yoga Upload are considered vinyasa flow. Now, vinyasa is also the term used to describe a specific sequence of poses, which is your plank to low plank, your chaturanga, to upward facing dog and then back to downward facing dog. It's sometimes referred to as your transition sequence. And this vinyasa sequence is sometimes the most challenging part of a flow class for, for beginners. And actually one of you requested a chaturanga tutorial, how to do a proper chaturanga. So I'm working on that. I'm going to do a vinyasa essentials tutorial series where we break down all the components of the vinyasa. So you start with down dog, plank, the way how to lower down to chaturanga, how to move up to upward facing dog or cobra, and then back to downward facing dog. So I'll be posting that very soon. Now vinyasa, I think, is appropriate for people that have some yoga experience. Because you flow from pose to pose, you don't have a lot of time to pause and really learn the alignment details. So I think that you'll benefit most if you already are familiar with the common yoga poses. Vinyasa has a wonderful dance-like quality and there are so many benefits to it. Uh, depending on the class you're taking, it can be a great physical workout. Um, you work up a sweat, you generate heat from the ujjayi breathing and your dynamic movement, so you increase your strength, you improve flexibility, and also you enhance your concentration and your mental focus as you connect your breath and your movement and as you transition gracefully, as gracefully as you can, from pose to pose. So that's your vinyasa. Now let's move on to what may be considered more passive styles of yoga. Next is yin yoga or other yoga studios might label it as deep stretch yoga. I'm sure you're familiar with the Taoist concepts of yin and yang. They're opposite and complementary principles. So yang is your more masculine and active energy, and yin is your feminine and passive counterpart. Now, I know that's an oversimplification, but you get the idea. So in yin, you're passive in the sense that you're on the floor the whole time uh, doing seated and supine poses supported by props when necessary and you hold the poses for quite a while much longer than you would in a vinyasa class so typically three to five minutes in yin we gently and safely stretch 
the connective tissue that surrounds the joints and the idea behind that is when we moderately stress or stretch the connective tissue the body responds by making it longer and stronger and the way to moderately stretch that and stress the connective tissue is by holding the pose for a long time so if you're looking at someone in a yin pose they might look like they're not really doing anything because they're not moving much but some yin poses can be very intense just depending on who's practicing there are going to be some strong sensations not sharp pain we never want sharp pain in any kind of practice but discomfort yes there is going to be some discomfort in different parts of the body that's part of the process for yin yoga we intend to improve flexibility in yin yoga now that makes it different from the other passive form of yoga which is restorative yoga now some people i think confuse yin yoga and restorative yoga because from the outside they look very similar people are on the floor they hold poses for a really long time they're surrounded by props but actually the approach is very different and the effect on the body is different in a restorative yoga class you might do just five or six poses you hold the seated poses for about five minutes and some supine poses you hold for even longer, like 10 minutes. Now the body is completely supported by props. You use the props to adapt the pose to fit the body and that way long holds are possible. We do the long holds because it takes the body a while to fully relax and to release into the pose. So there is some passive stretching that happens when you stay in the pose for a long time, but actively stretching is not your intention. You want to feel supported and mostly comfortable in the pose. It should require less effort than your yin yoga practice. And the idea is to just relax deeply, to completely release, to bring balance back into a body and a mind that's stressed out. A lot of us struggle from adrenal fatigue and restorative yoga can be a great antidote for that. It can be a wonderful healing practice for a lot of people. In fact, some of my fellow yoga teachers call it structured nap time. <laughs> But, you know, that's not the case for everyone. Um, we also have some people where restorative yoga is so challenging, not necessarily to the body, but to their mind. Being still and being quiet can be scary for some because our habitual thoughts and emotions and reactions come into the foreground and there's nothing to distract ourselves with. There's no loud music. We're not constantly moving. And so this disciplines us to learn how to sit with a discomfort to watch our own reactions well all of yoga trains us to do that the different styles just achieve it in different ways so both yin and restorative can be beneficial for all yoga students it doesn't matter how many years you've been practicing or if you're a beginner this can be very good this allows us an opportunity to slow down and to quiet down and in our very busy lives this is what we need now how do you know which style you should practice what's right for you well here's what i think in the beginning of your yoga practice you will naturally gravitate towards the style that fits your personality so if you're someone who's you know always on the go you talk fast you move fast you're doing achieving a lot then you might be attracted to a strong dynamic practice like a vinyasa because it will appeal to your desire to achieve you know you want to do the difficult poses the challenging the cool looking ones and you'll enjoy the physical challenge now if you're someone who is a more mellow personality you like things slow you like a slower pace you like things quiet then you might be more attracted to yin restorative or gentle yoga now this is all fine there's nothing wrong with that of course naturally we will be attracted to things that um, that are very sim that, that fits our personality now here's my suggestion to you as you start to grow in your practice when you start to notice change not just in your body but in your daily life yoga is really making an impact on your life I really encourage you to explore a different style to seek out the opposite of what you would usually be attracted to so if you're the doing type the go 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 um, 
you know, you're the type that skips Shavasana or <laughs> you're very uncomfortable in it. You're, you've done all the hard work, you're in Shavasana, you're like, what is this? We're not doing anything and you can't wait to get out of there. Well, <laughs> that might be a sign that you need to explore the more mellow practices like restorative, yin or even a gentle yoga we need to bring balance into our lives now conversely if you're someone that's always practicing you know the soft mellow yoga styles and there's really no major injury that's preventing you from uh, going for a stronger practice I suggest you you do it you you try try something stronger and more challenging this is an opportunity for us to get out of our comfort zone to bring balance back into our lives we need to complement our natural tendencies and predispositions and it's gonna be uncomfortable <laughs> either way it's gonna be uncomfortable um, not just for our body especially for our minds but this is how we change this is how we learn and this is how we grow so I encourage you to try all the different styles I hope that was helpful to you in some way and thank you so much for joining me I'll see you next time namaste